Again, today's sermon comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 11 through 33. This is the word of God. In whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that town, that house or town. Truly, I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than, that, than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother, brother will deliver brother over to death and father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved." When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is, it is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Bezalbo, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed." or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say, it, say in the light. Or what you hear whispered, proclaim it on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore... You are more val of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the word of God. We are back after the Reformation. Uh, I talked about a few Sundays. We are back to our Matthew series. We are going through the book of Matthews together. Um, Last Sunday, I was working on the computer in the back with our um, deacon, Michael Lee, um, on the church matter. And then on his cell phone, there was a news alert. And he told me that there was a shooting in a small church in a small town of Texas. Uh, some of you probably heard about this this past week, knowing it, maybe not. Um, while they were having a service within a small church, gunmen came and shoot against people in the church having service there. And news says 25 people got killed, plus one unborn baby. 20 people got injured. And people who die includes men, women, and children even the little one. And he says, eight people in one single family died. I forgot the last name of that family. Eight people, one day. It's really sad, heartbreaking um, news. And it says, the news says it was bloodbath with inside a church because as, as we do, we are recording this service, this sermon too. Uh, the church was recording um, the service too and there's a video footage of that and the police says it's hard to watch the video. And being a small church, I was... Um, it came more relative, I mean, more personally to me. Because for that church, half of the congregation died on that day. Yes. 
It deeply saddens my heart. And, and after that, this week, I came to this passage. And our passage here is not light fun um, contents. It's very hard, heavy, serious contents. And it reminded me of what Christian life in this world is about and is like. What do you expect from Christian life, in Christian life, in this world? What's going to accompany the Christian life here? I can ask you in a different way. Do you know what is one of the major themes that appears throughout the New Testament that describes Christian life, what it is going to be like? One of the major things that you see in association, in relation with Christian life throughout the New Testament, it is suffering. Look at Paul's letter. Suffering is almost everywhere. Look at Gospels. Suffering, suffering is almost everywhere in the Gospel too. And then it says, in this world you will have a tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. That's what you need to expect. In this world, you will have tribulations. But take heart, I have overcome the world. As for the inner man of the Christian, is filled with satisfaction, peace, joy, content, thankfulness, grace of God, and love. But as for the outer man and towards the relation to the world, you will face sufferings, persecutions, trials, hardships. And the Bible describes this kind of state of Christian person in this phrase. I love this phrase This I see in the Bible. Sorrowful yet rejoicing. These two things are coexisting together in the Christian life. Sorrowful yet rejoice. Struggle but triumph. Living in this broken world, but tasting the eternal kingdom. I want to turn your attention to the words of Jesus here, as Jesus is sending out his beloved disciples away from his physical presence. You guys go and do your gospel ministry. I'm sending you out and do it. And in that instruction, Jesus gives them what to do and not only that, what to expect in their gospel ministry. And one of it is a rejection by the people. Would you turn to our Bible passage? I'm going to come back to our passage over and over again. So please, we do that all the time. Put your finger there in the Bible or stay in the Bible passage on your phone. Verse 11 and whatever the town, whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it, and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. And if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your word, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Here in this passage, Jesus is not giving an impression that you guys are disciple, my disciple, I'm with you, so your ministry is going to be always successful, exciting, fun, great things are going to happen all the time. Jesus is not giving them that kind of impression. There will be people who will receive their message and the peace will come upon them, but there also will be people who will reject your message who's upset and angry with your message. And then, do not be shocked by that. Just shake the dust of your feet and just move on. That's going to happen, guys. Some of you may have shared the gospel before with someone or simply invited someone to come to church with you. And maybe you have got turned down by the people. Either gently, no, or 
abruptly, emotionally, you got in, you engaged in some sort of argument and the person was like, ah, angry at you. I don't know. And if you are thinking, oh, I'm not good with evangelism, I'm not good with sharing gospel, maybe this, this is not for me, I, I should not do this. If that is how you feel about it, hello, look at this passage. Because even the apostles, handpicked by Jesus, designated and sent by Jesus, they experienced rejection. And this is not only at this moment when they are somewhat not fully trained. No, if you read the contents of what Jesus is saying here, Jesus is looking forward. So what's going to happen that you will be dragged by the people, stand before the kings and the governors. Jesus is talking about the stories in the book of Acts. After the resurrection, after the coming of the Holy Spirit, you guys, even with, be filled with the Holy Spirit, will experience Rejection by the people. It is not simply because you're not good at evangelism. You guys are not good at explaining gospel to the people. Oh, that's why you guys experience that rejection. That is not the point here. Now I want to say this. If even the apostles experienced rejection by the people, turning it down on you, don't you think we will experience that? Your sharing of the gospel with others is not meaningless even if they reject it. You get rejected or they turn, down, turn it down on you on that moment. Brothers and sisters, you cannot cut down a tree at one swing. It takes several attempts, little by little, who knows God is using you that moment as a part of the process to soften the person's heart, cutting down the unbelief of that person. Who knows God will use someone else in the future to completely knock it down. But even if they reject you till the end, your sharing of the gospel is not meaningless. Look at verse 15. Truly, I say to you, it will be more bearable on that day, on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. It serves to store up God's wrath if they reject his offer of grace till the end. In other words, let me put it, this is what Jesus is saying. It would be more bearable for the ancient former generation who never heard about the grace of God in the Son of Jesus Christ than these people who heard and still reject God's offer of grace because these people will be speechless on that day before the Father. It's just serving to establish God's justice and wrath. And not only rejection, in this passage, she just points out there will be a persecution, imprisonment, blood, suffering, mockery. Verse 17, beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues. And you'll be dragged before the governors, kings, for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. And he says, even that, verse 21, brother will deliver brother over to death. And the father, his child, and his children will rise against parents, have them put to death. How sad is that? Within close family, relatives, this is happening. You know what? This is still happening in some parts of the world. One example I can tell you, North Korea too. Because relatives and close neighbors find out that someone, someone has Bible or a Christian reporting to the communist party and they get killed. Verse 22, you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. But the one who endures to the end 
will be saved. When they persecute you one time, flee to the next. Just, you know, disciples, run away! Flee! If persecution comes, run, guys! Possibility, this sounds like a miserable life. Where is the good news in this passage? What is the good part in this passage? Just expect persecution, mockery, rejection, suffering and pain, even death in Christian life. That's what this passage is about. Whew. If that's all we see in this passage, we are missing something very important here. Because I, I, these are what you need to remember. I want you to take this with you as you go home from this place today. One, look at verse 16. Behold, I am sending you. I am sending you. As sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Behold, it calls for our attention. Look at this. Pay attention. I am sending you. Jesus is sending his people. Knowing that his people are like sheep. In the midst of wolves. This is not a mistake. Jesus is not making a mistake here. He's intentionally sending his people in the midst of wolves. Christians surrounded by a hostile environment in the world, living as a stranger in this world, facing these persecutions or trials and hardships, it's not a mistake on the Lord's part. Fail to keeping us safe. Fail to protect. No, it's not. He knows it. And he is sending his people. His plan is when persecution, trial, or hardship comes, and a lot of times we think it's, it's because the Lord is far from us. It is because the Lord does not care about us. It's, what is the Lord doing here? It's some sort of his plan got messed up. He's out of control. Does he know about this? It is none of those. We may feel like that, but the scripture says none of those. In fact, we see the opposite of it. Would you look at verse 19? I'm, t- I'm telling you today, I'm going to come back to this passage so many times. Verse 19. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speaks, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Now, in that intense moment of persecution, Jesus is reminding them, you will not be left alone by yourself. To not be anxious when you are dragged, flogged, standing before the king. Man, I can get killed today. To not be anxious. Because Holy Spirit is with you. You are not standing there in that Position in that way because the Lord is far from you. You just left alone. No, the Spirit is with you and He will give you words what to say. Now, do you see the involvement of the Holy Spirit? Now, we saw the involvement of the Son. Son is sending, Spirit is with. And if you look at verse 20 and 29 and 30, you see the God the Father who is the absolute control in sovereign power. And the persecution and hardship of Christians. What we see here is a trying God getting involved in the person's life, even in the midst of hardship, suffering, and persecution, so intimately. Father, Son, and Spirit. It is not because his plan got messed up. It's not because he doesn't care about what you're going through right now. Let me remind you this. In hardship or persecution, when people let with you, when you are struggling over something, you will find God so close more than ever before. He is intimately with you in that moment. He drew near to you. Have you 
and you will taste his comfort and his presence like never before. Secondly, you need to see this. I see something mind blowing you. Jesus spoke about potential rejection, persecution, mockery, and even death. And look at verse 26. Look at verse 26. The conclusion Jesus makes here after that. Verse 26. So have no fear of them. <laughs> Do you grasp what Jesus is saying here? I was reading this like, you can get rejected, persecuted, thrown, dragged by people, mocked by people, even can get killed. So have no fear of them. What? How do you make sense of this? You can get killed, guys. So, have no fear. Actually, Jesus does not say this once. He repeats this. Look at verse so 26. So, have no fear of them. Verse 28. And do not fear those who kill the body. Verse 31. Fear not, therefore. With all this being said, Jesus, don't, don't be afraid. Don't worry. And what is the reason that he gives that we should not be afraid? 29. Verse 29. That's the reason he gives us. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. <laughs> Two sparrows sold for a penny. So one sparrow is cheaper than a penny. None of them will fall to the ground apart from your father's sovereign control. People can be careless about it. Let me put it in our money. Penny. I don't know how many of you walk around and saw a penny. <gasps> penny! Actually, I have a lot of penny in my house. And if you, I don't know how many of you have done this before. If you take that, a lot of penny, to deposit or whatever to count you to market and the machine that counts pennies, you actually need to pay for that. <laughs> like these days people don't want penny. Like, I don't know what to do. They have a less value. Two sparrows penny. People can be careless about it. And even then, God takes care. Not a single of them will fall to the ground without permission or sovereign control. And hear this word, your father. He personalized this, your father. And he mentioned the sovereignty of the father and his perfect knowledge of the father, of you and your situation. And he says, are you not more of value than many sparrows? The problem is that so many of us think of ourselves so little, so less. You are more value to your father than you think. I want to say it right away. We are nothing, but He takes us. He treats us. He treats us more valuable than we think of ourselves. Rebellious people. People like nothing but the dust, like a flower of the field. One day it is there and it is gone, like a grass. 
But the Lord takes a person, what is a man before you, before the everlasting God. Man is like nothing but a dust, but he takes us, treats us valuable. And the scripture says to the point that he did not spare his own son. His eternal son for us. Within, will he not also graciously give us all things? He did not spare his son on the cross, hear my word, to save you. Why did Jesus die on the cross? To save me. And he, the fathers, after all, is going to watch me just being perished? Meaninglessly? You are more of value than this. In your suffering, the persecution, hardships. Do not fear. Because your father takes you and made you as his treasured possession. You do not neglect your treasure. This is not my word. But scripture says he made us as his treasured possession. People like us. Person like me. And you. As I was meditating on this passage, I thought of uh, Stephen in the book of Acts. Do you guys know a person named Stephen in the, gospel, in the book of Acts? He was not an apostle, a church member. A lot of people say he was a deacon. When he was persecuted and stoned to death, it says, a special vision was given to him. His eyes was open, and heaven being open, he saw something that the Son of Man, the God, the Son, Jesus, standing, standing on the throne. And everywhere in the Bible, besides that, you will find the expression. Seated on the right hand of God, the Father, seated on the throne, seated on the throne. But the Stephen so was standing. And I imagine the eyes of the king of the universe, whom all the angels listen, obey, bow down and worship. And his eyes was on Stephen, and Stephen was beholding him. He stood up as he stood up from his throne. All the heavenly hosts and angels, because what's going on? What's going on? And just eyes of the universe there because he was being killed for the sake of Christ. And the king could not just sit down. He just stood up. I'm watching. And this verse echoes in my mind. You are more of your value than this to the king. Therefore, my third point, fear the right one. Fear the Lord. Do not fear man. Do not fear this world. There is only one whom you and I need to fear. Fear the Lord. Verse 28, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Fear no man, fear no devil, I know it's a Korean culture thing too. Kishin, <gasps> oh, demon, a ghost. They can kill your body. 
But that's it. If you're thinking this life is everything, this life is everything, killing my body is humongous, becomes human. <gasps> But your body is wasting away anyways. You'll be like a cloth, you take it off. Because we are losing the eyes of the eternity. We are losing the sight of the kingdom of God that makes us, this life is everything. Verse 32, so everyone who acknowledged me before man, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before man, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. For hope of glory, do not settle for people's approval. Do not just always seeking, always craving for what people's going to say about me. What, are, what is he going to say? What is she going to say about me? Those people's like, their approval, their approval, their recognition. And we just shut our mouth. We just don't do it because I, I'm afraid what they're going to say about me. But seek the approval of your king. What he's going to say about you. On that day, you will regret if you value what people say about you more than what kings say about you. Because what the worthless people say about you will be forgotten forever, have no impact at all. But what the king will say about you will be last, everlasting, have impact, eternity. So in your life, what are you going to seek? What people are going to say about me or what the Lord is going to say about me? I'm going back to the beginning. Let me wrap up with this. Five years old girl, I was watching the news of that shooting at church. Seven years old, 16 years old, married couple, family, people, many people got killed in that shooting in Texas. And that CNN news, a mom came, a mom woke victim who lost her family shared on the interview and she said in the tears and trembling voice this is what she said my God is in control and I know my son and my daughter-in-law are in the arms of Jesus Looking there, turning her eyes there. And the news says, despite losing half of its congregation in that shooting, which likely damaged the church beyond repair, the First Baptist Church will host our service, worship service this Sunday. I don't have it here, but I'll think about it. Last Sunday, we had a shooting here, let's say. Half of our church member died. I don't know how many of you are willing to come back here and have service today. In that heart aching moment, God drew near to them. One person testified about the church. It says, its member often serve the community, helping the feed, helping and feed the needy, cleaning up the neighbor's property after storm. They do not, they don't have a lot of money, but they are always willing to give. Many modern day Christian church, sends me many, try to maximize, turn our attention 
focus on this life, this age. Believe in Jesus. You'll be well. You will have health. You'll be prosper. It will go well. Your business will go well. Believe in Jesus. You have children. You will do this. But please read Bible. That kind of Christianity is foreign to the New Testament. It's foreign to this Jesus that I see here in this passage in the Bible. Never try to maximize focus on this life. In this life, you will have tribulations and hardship, suffering. Whether you have a gun pointing in your head, I remember I tell, told you this before, or you have a cancer, your disease, a problem, it's the same thing. The devil seeks to destroy your faith. Where is your God? Forget it. Don't go to church. Whether you are prosper, I'm making a lot of money, I have no problem, everything going well. I don't need to go to church. My children, my family, my vacation, it's all the same thing. Try to destroy your faith. And I'm here on each Sunday to remind you of that age to come. Turn your eyes to that age to come. Let's turn our eyes to that age to come. That is why because we can serve sacrificially, we can give sacrificially, we can lose for the sake of Christ, and we can endure through all in the hope in Christ of the kingdom that he brings. One who endures till the end will be saved. And even if we die, we will inherit the kingdom. Church, you are of more value to him than this. Let's pray.